the title race, it's been such an interesting debate for the past maybe month uh, as to who's in it. Tottenham, Arsenal. Is it just Manchester City? Are they going to run away with it? Will nobody be anywhere near them? We're now 10 games into the season. Arsenal are clear by four points, but there's still a lack of respect being placed upon Arsenal. But equally, are we disrespecting Tottenham as well? Let's take a look at what some of the mainstream media have had to say. Let's break this down. But is it? But my question ahead of time is, is it starting to become a little bit pathetic and a little bit embarrassing the way certain teams, namely Arsenal and I suppose Spurs as well, are just being tossed aside? No respect being put upon their name. Let's take a look here what Jamie O'Hara had to say. <laughs> you know, we, we don't care. You know, we, we're playing well. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, if you watched Arsenal yesterday, they were they got absolutely pumped in the second half. No one. So just very quickly, first of all, Jamie O'Hara is unhappy that Tottenham are not receiving more praise, more praise from the media, more praise from rival fans, like not being validated really for how good their start to the season has been. I do believe their greatest ever start to a Premier League season. I was talking about how bad Arsenal were. They're just another win. Well done. Got it over the line. Why are you Ever bringing Arsenal into this? Well, because well, Laura Woods is right there. Why bring Arsenal up? It, again, this is the one thing I'd say about Jamie O'Hara and a lot of pundits out there. If they're unhappy about something to do with their team, they bring Arsenal in it to, to, to you know, to take a... For me, it's a cheap shot dig at Arsenal. Because the point is, is that everyone jumps on Tottenham whenever we don't get, a, you know, play unbelievable football and we're bopping teams off the park like Barcelona. We beat Everton 2-0. Beating Everton 2-0 was a good result. And as I said in my match reaction, the best performance of the season from Tottenham. Not for the way they moved the ball, not for the scoreline, not for the goals, but the fact that they did not allow Everton in the second half to create a single ch chance that didn't have a shot. Yes, Everton should have scored a goal or two in the first half. They caught them on the counter from some mistakes. But overall, it was a game where Tottenham completely limited their opponents. In the vast majority of games this season, Spurs have been a bit vulnerable. They've averaged between 15 to 16 attempts on their goal, almost half of which have been from inside the box in all of those games. That is the, the element of the performance that isn't sustainable. Now, I'm really not sure on th these platforms why they don't have... Listen, Jamie O'Hara is entitled to his opinion. I'm not got no issue with him. He's a Spurs fan. He's back in these football clubs. There's never any nuance, though. There's never any a an opinion. There's, there's a handful, like Laura Woods is brilliant. Adrian Durham, fantastic. But there's never any challenge to this. The idea of sustainable performances isn't that Tottenham's football's boring. It's the volume of opportunities that you allow your opponents to have. He uses Arsenal as an example. Arsenal, this is the first game this season where Arsenal have been peppered for a 45-minute period. That hasn't been the norm this year. In their 13 games they've played, this has happened once for 45 minutes, and they still won. That's why people are looking at it as an anomaly, saying, good win, they move on to the next game. If Arsenal start performing like they did in their second half against Leeds, game after game after game after game, people's view on how sustainable their wins are would change. Who were a good side and set up very well against us in the first half. And we broke them down and won the game. What do people want from us? This is the best start we've ever had to a Premier League season. Ever. And people are still not happy. We're level one points with Manchester City. I said and we're that getting, earlier. And Spurs are getting dug out. Well, this is the thing I'd say. You're right. Spurs are being dug out and they probably haven't had an, as much respect put upon their name as they should. That's been based on the performances, as I've also, I've also pointed out. But this is also the world we live in. And TalkSport are a mainstream media broadcaster, but they have adopted the fan media approach in recent years by allowing, you know, their presenters are very hyperbolic at times, very reactionary and very outspoken with their agendas. That is all absolutely fine, acceptable, and should be embraced. I enjoy it. I watch it. I listen to it. I've not got no issue with it. But you reap what you sow, Jamie. The reason you're not seeing rivals, and namely Arsenal fans, say, well done, Tottenham, is in the same breath you say, we're level with City. We deserve respect. Arsenal are four points clear of City, and you put almost no respect upon their name. This is the issue. When you don't give out respect, you're never going to receive it back. And as rivals, should we really be out there respecting one another? Maybe if you're the host of neutral shows on TalkSport, on the football terrace, on Sky, you have to be. But when you are, a, and you are, Jamie, a, an ex-pro, but you're a, you're a Spurs representative online, 
why are you expecting validation and respect from your rivals? It's a madness to me. It truly, truly is. Uh, make sure you're hitting like and share buttons, getting your comments in below. Let's take a look at what Sky Sports had to say, though, about this title race. Remind ourselves of what that's done to the Premier League table this afternoon. And remember, Arsenal winning a, what seemed like a, a really tough game at Leeds as well today uh, to go four points clear. They won it through Bukayo Saka's goal. Uh, Gabriel had a... What sent off? That was... Um, overturned there was a penalty missed by Bamford a penalty overturned as well it all happened at Leeds this afternoon but it's left them four points clear then it's Spurs and Chelsea in that top four and Liverpool now creeping up to eighth one of those teams that have played nine rather than ten matches do I think a lot of people Gary assume that City were going to run away with it this season what's your take on it now I, I still think they will I still think they will I don't think today change it this is a freak game um, playing at Anfield, and I think for City, it's the difference. I just want to stop, stop Gary Neville there for a moment. We say it's a freak game, and I get they don't have a great record there, but they conceded three goals to Newcastle. They were lucky to walk away with a point from the Aston Villa game. They should have gone 3-0 down against Crystal Palace. They came back and they won that game. This isn't the first time this season where Man City have been vulnerable. They still conceded three goals to Manchester United. Every week, Arsenal get doubted, but they keep getting better and better and better. And even when they have a poor game, they still get the results. When Man City have been poor this season, they've dropped points. Why is that being ignored? Most difficult game they have. Um, I still think City will run away with it. I think Arsenal will come back towards you know, Tottenham, Chelsea, United, Newcastle. I think City will just sort of go away. This season is a very different season as well. Post-World Cup, it could be completely different than it is now. I, I, I don't get this post-World Cup thing. This post-World Cup thing uh, and, and injuries. I'm sure we're going to get into injuries in a minute. Oh, yeah, but what if your players are tired after the World Cup? Well, what if they do well at the World Cup and they're buoyed on by it and they have... A, and the, the, Mane, when he came back from the AFCON, the level of performance from him in, in that second half of the season was astronomical. And I think a lot of that was... Spurt. He got moved centrally. He was brilliant. It nearly led to a quad for, for Liverpool. Um, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Micah? I mean, it's tough. Arsenal. Arsenal have been brilliant. You know, we always, we, we always expect... Ar Do you think they'll last? I mean, no one is saying, can Arsenal win the league yet? The question has now moved on to, will Arsenal be title challengers? What I would love to see Sky Sports do is define what they mean by title challenger. For me, I look at it as within the last five games of the season, it is mathematically plausible for you to win the league. So with five games to go, if you're 12 points off the top, you're not in a title race. With five games to go, if you're three points, five points off the top, you can win the league. You're in that race. You're there or thereabouts. They've got to define it because are Arsenal going to fall away? W what do you mean? No team has ever had this many points after 10 games and not made the top four. There's been very few teams with this many points in the top flight football post-World War II that has started like this and not been in a title race. This is Arsenal's greatest start for 100 years. To just suggest they're going to fall away, I just think is really, really disrespectful. Arsenal to drop well, they're off. Last. They're best but, but ever starting a top division. Yeah, this no, season, the they're different. They're, they're different. I hope they they're, do, they've but got will, a different energy. Will they live with City? The, over the course of the season, if they get a few injuries, probably not. The difference is with Man City and Arsenal is Man City can lose a, a few players and play the exact same way. They can afford to rotate. If they lose a Jesus and a Zinchenko to a certain degree, a, a Thomas party in the centre midfield, all of a sudden become a different team. But I, I agree with Micah there. But if Haaland get, goes out for three months, if Haaland gets injured for three months, would City be as good as they are right now? Now, some will say, well, they won the league last year, so absolutely, yes, they will be. But who knows? What if they lose Haaland, they lose Cancelo, and they lose Rodri? Because that's the equivalence here. Will they be as good? The answer is no. Equally, they've had no real injury problems at all this season, City, and they've dropped four points. In fact, I think they've sorry, they've dropped how many points they dropped? They've drawn two. I want to make sure I get this right. I should have researched this before I went live, but I didn't. Let me just go and get this now because I want to make sure I'm accurate about this. They obviously dropped three points yesterday and they've drawn two games. So they've dropped nine points so far. I'm a liar. Seven points. Seven points, sorry. I, I correct myself. They've dropped seven points fully fit. Arsenal have dropped three points and they've had injuries. Sinchenko has missed games. Party has missed games. 
And they've dropped less points than Man City. Of course, Arsenal can stay with City this year. Of course they can. Absolutely. As they are now, you know, they're on a good run. Roy, what do you think? No, I still think you still fancy City for a title, yeah? And Arsenal have a brilliant start to the season. R Roy's right. City are still the favourites. Let's not get it twisted. But it's obviously a long way to go yet. You, you wouldn't bet against Man City, obviously, winning the title. And very, very strong. Arsenal have improved recruitment this summer. They've got momentum. The feel-good factor of the club. Plenty of energy in the club now. And even today, I think they're getting a bit of luck, you know, with the penalty. Obviously, penalty missed today. But uh, you'd have to obviously still fancy City. Before today, Jamie, people were asking the question, could City go the entire season unbeaten? Does that change the way people might think of them in terms of that invincibility? And that's a really good question there. City are not invincible. Quite literally now they've been beaten. But we've seen in games, and City fans obviously laugh at me because I'm a United fan, and I think they're gettable. You can get at them in games. So many games this year, teams have got at them, scored goals against them. You've just got to be defensively resolute and clinical when you get your opportunities. I still make City the favourites. I still think Arsenal are coming second this year. I have still said and remain certain that City will become title contenders over the course of this season. Whether they challenge for this season's title or next year's, they are moving on to another level. But every single week, there's a new narrative for Arsenal. Good start, but it's only a handful of games. All right, best start ever, but can they maintain it? When they start to maintain it, it will be yes, but will it go on for another 10 matches? The goalposts are going to get moved. And I think Arsenal are going to have a tremendously good season. I'm going to hear Gary Neville, who, by the way, Gary Neville is a legend of my football club. He's a, a, a person I have a tremendous amount of respect for, uh, broadly speaking. I think he's, you know, I don't know him personally, what I've seen from him and, and everything else, what he does uh, sort of uh, from a political point of view here in the UK, the charities he's helped, and his football opinion is great. Plus, he's a legend of my football club. But I have to say, when I hear him speak about Arsenal, the same as when I hear Jamie O'Hara, the same as when I hear Jason Cundy, the same as when I hear the majority of the mainstream, there's almost like a, there's a bitterness under their breath. There is almost a, uh, a kind of, and I want to make sure I say this in the right way, there's a bitterness under their breath. There's almost like a, like they're hiding laughter, like they're just teasing Arsenal. And, and, and maybe that's part, part of the banter. Maybe that is part of the fandom that, 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 and, and the groups that they're within. But for me, it's, be, it, it's become boring now. Very, very boring to hear Arsenal disrespected. It's become very boring for people to say, put respect on Tottenham, put respect on City, put respect on Chelsea. But then at the same time, they're laughing and underplaying everything that Arsenal have done. This Pre and post World Cup nonsense. I don't understand it. It makes no sense. Every team is in the same situation. This, what if Arsenal get mass injuries to all their main players? What happens then? Okay, apply that logic to every other team as well. And I just think that Arsenal will also being judged by standards that may create be created during the during the season. Wow, they're you know if they could suddenly go five points, they suddenly go seven points, they suddenly go eight points clear at the top. The standards and the expectations for this season may change slightly. But let's not lose sight 10 games in of what the big, uh, most people said at the beginning of this campaign, that they probably wouldn't do much. They might make the top four. They said that if they didn't make the top four last year, that was it. Their best chance. They're not going to be able to do it again next. And they've surpassed everybody's expectations so far. So put a bit of respect on their names. And I will end up by saying the same thing about Tottenham. Tottenham's points haul is absolutely sensational. And if they start to have more games as they did against, against Everton, which I believe are sustainable performances because you're not leaking and hemorrhaging a, a, a vat of chances they could also put themselves into title contention as well no doubt hit the like and share button for me people before you leave turn on the bell notification so you know when more content is uploaded we're live later today 6 p.m monday the 17th of uh, october depends when you're watching this you might be watching it tomorrow but go check out the top six show live at 6 p.m tonight as well until next time take care goodbye god bless and we'll see you soon thank you